Have you just been running, a bit stressed, or have you just been outside and it's rather hot? If the answer is yes, then you are probably covered in sweat. But what even is this sweat? Where does it come from? Why does it smell? And should we try to stop ourselves from sweating? Sweat, believe it or not, is a rather magical substance made of 99% water and about 1% salt. It gets released from your skin every day and it protects you from overheating. As the liquid is released onto the skin, it evaporates and this process cools your body down. Thanks to this, we can cope with high temperatures, exercise hard, deal with stressful situations and still survive. We all have said this before, I'm sweating like a pig. But there is no justice in that, no other creatures sweat as much as humans do, some animals don't sweat at all. And so in this world, humans would definitely win any sweat competition, followed by horses and apes. Long time ago, this was advantageous as it allowed early humans to hunt and track prey for hours. As the prey could not cool down through sweating, it would eventually collapse from heat exhaustion. Humans, then covered in tons of sweat, could enjoy their dinner. Our sweat is made in two types of glands found in the skin, eccrine and apocrine glands. Eccrine glands cover 99% of our skin and produce odorless sweat. Their distribution is highest on our palms, soles and forehead, and these glands are crucial for thermoregulation. The not so much present apocrine glands are found in large numbers in the axillary and neurogenital regions. They release a viscous milky substance which is odorless upon release but contains proteins. These proteins get consumed by bacteria that live on our skin. They break the proteins into acids, such as propionic acid and isopaleric acid, in the process of feeding, and it's the acids produced that give our sweat the strong odor. The release of sweat is regulated by the hypothalamus in the brain. This is the thermoregulatory center of our body which responds to changes in core temperature, hormones, physical activity and emotions. Upon careful coordination of all of these inputs, the hypothalamus sends nerve impulses down the spine all the way to peripheral nerves that innervate the sweat glands. The nerve impulses activate the glands to produce and release sweat when it is needed. Raised temperature leads to sweating and widening of blood vessels which dissipates heat, while emotional sweating leads to vasoconstriction of blood vessels in the skin and hence we experience the well-known cold sweats we get when we are nervous or stressed. We all try to fight and prevent those wet sweat patches appearing on our t-shirts. Most people use antiperspirants daily as these contain metal salts, most commonly aluminium salts, which when applied dissolve in sweat or moisture of the armpit and form a gel-like substance. This substance forms a plug in the sweat gland near the skin surface and thus blocks the release of sweat. When it comes to sweating, one should also bear in mind that no fat or toxins get released in your sweat as your skin is not your second liver. All you can find in your sweat is water and some salts. So sweating more while exercising means losing more water weight, which gets replenished once you're hydrated again, not losing fat. Moreover, the fitter you get, the more you sweat when you work out really hard, as this will help your body to keep going longer as you cool down more efficiently. So, to sweat or not to sweat? Definitely sweat. Sweating is good for you, it keeps you alive. And also, apparently, the more you sweat, the luckier you get. So keep trying your best in whatever it is that you are working for, and don't be worried to be seen dripping with sweat while working hard. In the end, for humans, it's natural to be seen like that.